In this section, we're going to be working on our client and server at the same time by implementing features that impact both parts of the stack. This is going to be a good early glimpse into what full stack development looks like. You can expect the main mental challenge to be concern balancing and context switching. In this video, we're going to start by tackling the problem of authentication. We're going to use this video as a chance to discuss everything that needs to be done and explain the technology choices that we'll be using. Then, in the next video, we're going to actually code our implementation. I would consider this video an important prerequisite, so don't skip it. So, first off, what sort of authentication method are we going to build? You know, initially I thought that showing you a simple email password setup made the most sense. But the internet is full of brilliant free guides on this topic. So since I'm driven to help my students get their money's worth, I thought of doing something different. Something that is less written about on the internet. And what I'm talking about is passwordless authentication, famous for its magic link pattern. You may know of this authentication method if you use Slack or a service like Zite.co. So here's how the basic principle works. The user comes to a website and enters their email address. Now on the server side we check if they already exist in our system, and if not, we create a new account for them on the spot. Either way, we generate some sort of login link and send it to their email address. They open their email, click on this link, and that's how they log in. Optionally, your service might have a two-factor authorization mechanism. For example, the user might also receive a code via SMS that they need to enter. It's actually a brilliant system that works pretty well for some products, especially those that are geared towards a more technical crowd. So that's the general idea of how it works for the end user. But how are we going to implement this? For starters, how does the user actually log in when they click on the link? What's the magic? Well, the link will take the user to our website with a token parameter in the URL. The client will take this token from the URL and use it to authenticate with the server. This is how the login flow is triggered. The client will then send this token along with other requests that it makes as a confirmation of the user's identity. On the server side, we always need to check if the token is valid so that we know the operation was issued by our user. Now, there are two major security concerns here, so let's address them right away. First off, what is this token like? And more importantly, can it be faked? The token will be some kind of encrypted string that identifies the user. And since we're going to encrypt it by signing it with a private key on our server, an attacker will be unable to generate a fake one. The second major concern is, how long does this token last? Now, there is multiple opinions on this, but ideally, it should be a somewhat short-lived token. This decreases many potential security risks. We can always have our server generate new tokens periodically and hand them over to the client as part of a response. And this brings us to JSON Web Tokens, an open standard for generating access tokens that fits with our model. So, on the screen you can see what a JVT looks like. It's a short, URL-safe string that is made out of three Base64 encoded parts. The header specifies the algorithm that was used to generate the token. The payload contains the actual contents of the token, and the verify signature that is generated via specified algorithm, and some sort of string that only our server knows. The server will then use the string to confirm the validity of incoming tokens. Without knowing this secret string, an attacker can't generate fake tokens. Now, to work with this open standard, we'll use two libraries to help us out. The package JSON Web Token will be used for generating and signing tokens, and the package Express JWT will be used to finally finish our authentication middleware. We won't be sending emails in this section. We'll just generate a login link in our console for now. So there's no need to worry about that part just yet. And that's our battle plan for now. 